Sape satta bhavantu sukhitatta bhavantu sukhitatta Hello, I'm Dharma Zartero, here with the 28th episode of Nibbana, the secret treasure of the Buddhas. It's a beautiful day here in Norway, and uh, as you can see, I've been out in the sun, and so I wanted to get one more episode completed before I leave for Sri Lanka. Anyway, the last time we were talking about the path to stream entry and how we have to overcome the three uh, taints with the four foundations of mindfulness. Remember? So, <laughs> what is all this about? The whole idea is to develop equanimity, to be attached to neither pleasure nor pain, to especially be detached from possessiveness and sense enjoyment and all these kind of things, uh, so that we don't identify with anything in the world of being. That way we can reach Nibbana, tranquility, Samadhi, pure concentration, deep insight, and all these things that are so important to ultimate liberation and unbinding. So, to do this, we have to regard this world of impermanence and suffering and change as a disease. And our manifestation within this world, our participation in this world, is a kind of suffering. It's a kind of constant work that we have to do, a wheel that we have to constantly turn, isn't it? It's a burden. And when we can put down that burden, when we can let go of this I and mine and go deep into samadhi and concentration, and we face something unknown within ourselves, and there's a, a moment of wonder, a moment of ecstasy, of surprise and astonishment, because here's something new, here's something unknown, or even unknowable, transcendent, measureless, and it's within us. But we can experience this, and the way we experience it is by letting go of the lower fetters, and then rising to the higher jhanas, and from there to Nibbana itself. So, if we want to advance toward the deathless state, Nibbana, uh, the thing that can never be destroyed, <laughs> then we have to let go of the five lower fetters. Bhikkhus, the Buddha says, there are these five lower fetters. What five? Identity view. Doubt, distorted grasp of rules and vows, sensual desire, ill will. These are the five lower fetters. This noble eightfold path is to be developed for direct knowledge of these five lower fetters, for the full understanding of them, for their utter destruction, for their abandoning. Now, what does this mean? Well, first of all, identity view. The view that I am and everything in relation to me is mine. What me? What I? Can you show it to me? Where is it? <laughs> so by now you should be comfortable with this idea of no self. And when we can actually let go of self, it's such a relief, isn't it? When we're practicing a beloved hobby or an interesting art, or some discipline that we have mastered so deeply that it becomes part of our being. Uh, we can feel these moments when we're in the groove, we're in the zone, a moment of let go where we don't have to be cognizant of our self, our I, our ego, and all of our selfishness and stuff. We can just be with the moment and in the moment completely. That's called uh, raw attention or immediate experience and athletes and artists know it as being in the zone 
being in the creative flow. When we get into this kind of flow and we let go of our ego, and we're not resisting the course of events. We're allowing the events to take us wherever they want. And we're being uh, opportunistic in a way of simply enjoying the ride. This is a beautiful state. And this is uh, just the beginning of what's possible in meditation. So if we can let go of identity view and doubt, Doubt regarding the Buddha, doubt regarding the practice, doubt regarding the Sangha, the Eightfold Path, what have you. Uh, and just simply uh, surrender ourselves to this process, the process of becoming that leads to mastery of becoming and then finally leads to the end of becoming itself. Then we have some tangible uh, experiential uh, happiness derived from the path. See, it's not just dry, it's not just doctrine, it's not just dogma that we're following, you know, by the book. But it's a lived experience. Uh, if it's not a lived experience, if it's only theoretical or intellectual, then it's not going to give you the relief. In fact, your Buddhism will become part of your burden part of the stuff that you drag around with you everywhere you go. I'm a Buddhist. Yeah, well, then why aren't you smiling? <laughs> okay. <laughs> why are you taking yourself so seriously? If you're really a Buddhist, you have to be willing to laugh at your own foibles and your own silliness and your own attachments and your own stupidities. <laughs> Come on. Okay? We're all like that because we're human. To human, to be human, see? <laughs> to human is to screw up. <laughs> Screwing up is to human, <laughs> as air is to breathe. <laughs> that is how we learn. That's how we go forward. <laughs> there are no mistakes, really, because we can always learn from what happened, isn't it? So this is actually part of skillful living. And we went over this ages ago. How when you practice something, the mistakes that you make are grist for the mill of your improvement. Okay? You analyze those mistakes. You learn from them. And then you go on. And, and that is how you make progress. And even though the progress may seem to be slow, if we do it regularly every day, that practice can lead to something very profound. So if we can d just get rid of this doubt, if we can uh, let go of the view of rules and rituals and things like that as being carved in stone, huh? if we can see that rules and rituals are only a means discovered long ago and made part of the everyday routine of monks, the principles that actually make monastic life the uh, springboard to enlightenment. Uh, so, in the end of his life, the Buddha said, you know, after I'm gone, you can relax the minor rules and regulations. In other words, this is not the Sangha of rules and regulations. This is the Sangha of the Buddha's Dhamma. Okay? Let's not forget that. Let's not get caught up in so many rules and rituals and stuff and archaic and arcane practices that we lose sight of the fact this is about enlightenment. This is about Nibbana. And if nobody is attaining enlightenment, what are we doing here? Huh? Just following these empty rules and regulations? That's a boring idea. I mean, it's a horrible idea. Look at it this way. Who discovered these rules? Who instituted these regulations? Who started these rituals? They were people like the Buddha, uh, who every time something went wrong in the Sangha, he made a rule so it wouldn't happen again. Every time somebody did something stupid or embarrassing, that he made a rule that, no, don't do that anymore. It wasn't that Buddha sat down and said, okay, we're going to have 227 precepts. Here they are. No. But as needed, as necessary, as the mistakes of the brothers came up, the Buddha made a rule. 
So at the end, he said, you know, you can relax the minor rules. And guess what happened? At the conference after the Buddha's disappearance, they couldn't decide which rules were minor. They couldn't reach consensus on which rules were minor, so they kept them all. And now, 2,600 years later, most of the monks don't follow most of the rules anyway. So, we really need to revisit this business and make it uh, appropriate for the day and time. Not simply hang on to old rules because they're written down somewhere in some book. So, then of course there's sensual desire. We've been over that, how sensual desire simply well, leads you to identify with the body. And ill will, which is anger and wishing someone bad and like that. Uh, of course, these are for childish people who can't control themselves. So these are the five lower fetters. The Noble Eightfold Path is to be developed for direct knowledge of these five lower fetters, for the full understanding of them, for their utter destruction, for their abandoning. Now the Buddha's given us a hint. If we have direct knowledge of these lower fetters, if we can see them in our own selves, if we can observe them in everyday life, huh, it's going to be much easier to get rid of them. Why? Because we see how foolish they are. We see how ignorant they are, how we are self-fettered by views. Okay, to quote the Kalakaram Sutta. We're self-fettered by views, identity view, possessiveness view, sensuality view, rules and regulations view. Instead of pursuing the purpose of the rules and regulations, which is to attain Nibbana, we get all caught up in them as if there's something real. So let's let go of this religious attitude. Let's let go of this, well, we always did it that way in the past, and take a fresh look at these rules and regulations and see what they're really about. They're really about destroying these five lower fetters <laughs> and getting to the point of stream entry of the, the Dhamma I, uh, the Dhamma Chaku. The Dhamma I means seeing the Dhamma as it is seeing the path as it is, understanding how the different parts work together and so on. Then you can go to the pure abodes. If a bhikkhu should wish, may I, with the destruction of the five lower fetters, become due to reappear spontaneously in the pure abodes and there attain final nibbana without ever returning from that world, let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, not neglect meditation, be possessed of insight, and dwell in empty huts. What do you mean? Not dwell in opulent temples with many visitors coming and giving big donations so that everybody can have, you know, gold-plated uh, kutis or whatever? No. Live in empty, abandoned huts broken down huts alone and practice meditation. That's always the Buddha's instruction. That's the instruction he gave to everybody, regardless of the particular techniques or practices that he recommended. So everyone should practice alone and build up that discipline. And, uh, one of these days I'm going to do a little series on qigong and stretching and sitting properly. But, you know, sitting properly is really important. Yeah, I know it hurts. <laughs> it's a discipline. But if you do the proper yoga stretches and qigong energy exercises, there's no reason why it has to be uncomfortable. You should be able to sit for an hour without hurting yourself. Seriously. Uh, if not, sit in a chair. And we'll do this Kung Fu, our uh, Qigong series, a little bit later. So one should fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity. 
Huh? Serenity means no interruptions, means no distractions, means no passions, no attachments, nothing you got to do. But you can simply sit and let the mind settle. Not to do anything, but just allow it to attain tranquility, then detachment, equanimity. All these things will happen all on their own, but you have to give them the time. So practice. Be possessed of insight. Insight means these realizations that we're talking about. Insight means seeing the light within. Insight means encountering the unknown or even the unknowable within oneself, experiencing ecstatic moments of wonder and bliss at the vastness of what's inside, of the beauty of Nibbana. Sabbe Satta Bhavantu Sukhi Tattar Bhavantu Sukhi Tattar